Hello and welcome back. My name is Chuck. You're watching Let's Plant and let's get on to it. So in the last episode, I showed you how my garden was overgrown. We have neglected the garden for about three weeks while we were on vacation. And for the past week, I've been spending a lot of time working on my garden, tidying it up again, and clearing out all of the overgrowth. And I'm finally done with it today. You'll probably also notice that I'll be doing a lot of my summer episodes sitting under the alfresco because it's really hot outside and <laughs> I wouldn't want to get burned. So here we are. Here's what the garden currently looks like and if you stick around, you'll find out how we got from this to this. Welcome back to Let's Plant and I'm so glad that you're back to watching me again after being away for a few weeks. And yeah, I really love your responses in the previous video. A lot of you have expressed how much you missed the show while it was gone and while it was on break. And yes, I missed doing this too. <laughs> so let's discuss what happened to the garden. As soon as we came back, I immediately set to work on the garden. I trimmed the grass and I was working mainly on the very thick, the very tall ones around the edges. And I was just using my garden shears because they were hard to reach areas, particularly if I chose to use my lawn mower. They were right at the edge and they were close to some of the poles, the poles that I stuck in for attaching for affixing the shade. I had to manually trim around them for now. That way I have the clearance when I eventually work using the mower. And not only that, there were lots of weeds growing around, not only in the edges but in between the rocks, between the plants. And I had to manually remove them using my hands because nothing beats manual dexterity, right? I tried to pull them out of the rocks as cleanly as I can, roots and all, because if I don't, they would just regrow, them being weeds. Otherwise, if I can't do that, I just try to chop them really low, that way they would have to regrow a lot. It will take a bit of time before they start appearing again. Once they reappear, I'll just have to deal with them again. Hopefully this time around, I would be able to pull them out cleanly with the roots. But if not, I just repeat the entire process. Eventually, they would be tired or they would not have enough energy to regrow, especially now that it's summer. Because every time I keep chopping them, they would get burnt and it would be a lot harder for them to push out new growth by then. There's always the option of spraying them with weed poison but I try to reserve that as a very final resort because I do not want my plants to, to be affected especially since a lot of these weeds are growing between some of my plants. So there's always this danger that if I spray liberally over the area the poison gets soaked in the ground especially if it randomly rains or if I forgot about it and I just spray with water then as the poison goes into the soil, it might affect some of my plants. I'm not growing weeds, but you never know, they're still plants anyway, so it might affect them somehow. So I just try to avoid this problem of the soil absorbing the chemicals from the weed poison and just do it somewhere where I, I know it's completely safe or at least it won't be affecting the plants. And if I actually have to do it, I just spray a very tiny amount directly on the, on the weeds, on the cut portion of the weeds. That way, there's a very small likelihood, there's a very small chance that it affects the other plants. So my tip for you, if you're using weed poison or weed killers, use it very sparingly and uh, use a target, targeted version or a systemic version if you can find one. Just apply it on, on some of the leaves or stem of the weed itself. No need to go into the soil, into the roots. That way, you'll be sure that you're only targeting that plant, uh, very pinpoint precision and not doing a shotgun approach, you know, they're not going to affect anything else. Apart from the weeds, it's not only the weeds that are growing between the rocks and smothering my plants, it's also some of my ground cover. They're definitely taking advantage of this time when I was away to grow around and just smother the echeveria, so I have to trim them back. That way, some of my echeverias would not be covered anymore. They would be receiving ventilation and much needed sunlight, and that way they would not rot because that's all I'm trying to prevent here. Next up are the edges. I needed to work a lot on the edges. Earlier, I've already started by trimming out some of the taller taller weeds, taller grass on the edges, just so it would be a lot easier for my lawnmower to go through them, or at least if I use shears. There's a huge section here where I laid lots of planters with tiny plants, tiny chivers in the ground. 
they were small echeveras, small pups, and luckily the weeds, the grass covered them during the heat of summer. But after being neglected for quite a while, they have they have been depriving these pups of lots of sunlight. So I need to trim them back. And to do that, first I have to get them out of the way, just to give myself a lot of space to work around in. And with the trays, with the planters out of the way, I have a clear view of what I'm up against. So there's really tall grass around here. I had to trim them down. And since they are right around where the, the poles are, the metal bars, the metal bars where I attach my shade cloth in, then I had to, I had to manually cut them using my garden shears. In some areas, I would, be, I would have been able to use my lawn mower, but the battery is currently charging, so yep. Apart from the mower, I also had a line trimmer, but it shares the same type of battery as my lawn mower, so either way, I had no powered tools to use yet. I also had to pull some overgrowth that are growing along the edges. And if you remember, with my edges, I placed, I backfilled it with lots of um, scoria pebbles. And in retrospect, that was a good idea because the weeds that were growing inside or within the pebbles were a lot easier to remove because there's not a lot of soil for them to attach on. And the scoria being really loose means that the roots of the, the weeds of the grass had very little to hold on to except for all of those pebbles. So pulling out the weeds was a simple matter. All you have to do was to pull it out, shake it off a bit just to let loose some of the scoria and you're done. The growth has been the thickest around the Patreon shrine because that's that's where all of the planters were. I guess this was because the planters were providing a lot of shade for all of the grass, all of the weeds to grow into. So the microclimate around in that area was really good for growth. Wherever there's dense growth, I usually choose to do it manually by hand and I've got a few reasons for this. The first is that I just find it satisfying pulling things or working with my hands. And secondly, this gives me a chance to have a closer look at the plants because I am sitting or kneeling down and you know, having a very closer proximity to the plants means that I could have a much better look than if I were standing and just looking down. And if you're anything like me, I think you could spend a lot of time just staring at the plants, even just doing nothing, you know? So yeah, it's those times that count. With this close of a vantage point, I also take this chance to remove some of the dead leaves that are within reach. So I usually do this for some of my larger echeveras since they, they mostly need a lot of airflow underneath. It is important to provide ventilation and airflow because that would reduce the chances of having rot, of having fungus growing. It's not as serious in summer because it's hot and water, the water evaporates. Things dry out pretty fast. But this is going to be more important in the cooler months, in, the, in autumn, early spring, and during winter. Especially when it rains because there will be a lot of moisture trapped. And without proper ventilation, you'll just be you know, creating an environment that's very conducive for fungus to grow. So, as much as possible, give a lot of ventilation, remove some of the dead leaves, remove as much as you can, you know. You don't have to spend a lot of time to remove them, especially, for, especially from the smaller types of echeverias which, are, which have really dense leaves like the gloca. You know, it's just, you're just going to waste your time and they don't need it anyway. But for the larger echeverias, especially those that have larger leaves but not as dense, they would definitely need the airflow. They're not used to being all... What's this word? I think the only word that comes to mind is moist. <laughs> so don't give them a moist environment and at least you would be preventing fungus from growing. Now let's go back to the edges. To fix the edges, I mostly do it manually and I use a combination of garden shears or line trimmer or any cutting tool plus my half moon edger. I use the half moon edger to clearly define the boundary between the between the lawn and my garden. And and if you remember, I backfilled that uh, that boundary using scoria, using pebbles. It's easiest if you use the edger as opposed to maybe some shears or I don't know, some cutting tool because with the edger you're just pushing down and apart from being able to mark the boundary, you're able to cut the weeds and the roots as well. So pulling them out would be a simple matter. And I only use my cutting tool to trim or remove the, the overgrowth at the top. In tight areas, I use manual tools such as a, a pair of hand scissors, garden scissors I think, or shears, and of course the big one. 
but in larger spaces I would either use I would choose to use my power tools such as the line trimmer or my lawn mower whichever is more I don't know whichever fits of course it's going to be the easiest if you use your lawn mower but you'll have to be mindful that you do not damage some of the other plants so it's best if your lawn mower has the skirts or the shield you know that pushes plants up that way you could go under the plants and it would just take care of the grass underneath so my choice of tool depends on whether the area is hard to reach or not so for easy to reach areas i just use my lawn mower because that's the quickest the fastest and the most efficient hey looks like i'm making good progress zach really loves helping out in the garden and today i took this opportunity to teach him about the green bin we wilt the green bin inside the house into the backyard and i showed him what sort of stuff can be dumped into it so during that afternoon we were picking dead leaves some grass some some of the cuttings and you know, just dump it in now that things are tidy again i have a good look at the garden and i could see that some of my HIV areas are very leggy and they would need they are getting really weak and they have fallen over and i think they would need a chop a reset so that's something I have to do really soon. And apart from that, if you were in my place, I think you'd also be tempted to pull out to separate some of the pups. If you have a look around, a lot of my echeverias have pups growing underneath and this makes sense. It's a growing season, so they're growing really fast right now. I try my best to avoid separating them in the middle of summer right now. Because as you know, echeverias are summer growers or at least they grow during the warmer months. Except when it's really hot and they have to go dormant to protect themselves from the heat. But in my case, I have shade cloth on top of them, which makes it a lot, which makes the microclimate easier, you know. It, it removes the, the edge off from the heat, which means that even when it's the high 40s, they would be likely experiencing mid 30s or low 30s due to the filtering effect of the shade cloth. So again, the reason why I do not want to separate the pops right now is that the way I see it, I do not want to interrupt their growing period or growing cycle right now. If you chop them off or remove them now, it means that they would have to focus all of the energy, all of the growth into grow, regrowing or growing new roots, which means that there'd be a pause in their growth. And I usually wait until the middle of autumn before I do any chops or any separation, especially for the really young, the really, the pups. <laughs> I have a couple of reasons for that. The first is that the pups grow the fastest while they are still attached to the mature plant, to the parent plant, and I wouldn't want to waste any of that. Secondly, I've already explained this a while ago, I do not want to interrupt their growing period, so I would just want them to continue to be steady you know, with their growth progress. I do not want to waste any of it. By leaving the separation or the chop until the final month of autumn, it means that I, I might still have enough time for them to settle down create regrow their roots or grow new roots before it gets really cold in winter you might have to move that date around depending on how cold it gets in your area but basically you have to hope that there's enough time for them to settle down before it gets into the cold of winter and one final thing you might be noticing all of these flower stalks of my echeveras right now and i know i keep saying in previous videos that i have to remove them i chop them off to avoid you know lots of uh, infestation insect infestation but in this case i'm leaving them on and i have a few reasons the first is a lot of them have bloomed already anyway the flowers are open which means that they have already expended the energy required to produce seeds or to produce the flowers secondly a lot of honey eater birds are coming into my garden not just the birds but other pollinating insects as well so i would like them to enjoy whatever nectar that's already there you know i just have to be vigilant about the harmful insects so in those cases i'll just have to remove the flower stalks of those affected but for those that are unaffected and that's a huge majority of them i'll just leave them alone let them be until the flower stalk dries out for the sake of propagation i might have to pull out some of the leaves from the flower stalks but otherwise i'll be leaving the flower stalk and the flowers alone also since it's summer don't forget to leave some uh, a basin or a bowl of water out speaking of birds don't forget to leave a bowl of water out for for the wildlife for the birds in my case it's just mostly birds anyway but still don't forget to leave a bowl of water out for them especially when it's really hot that way they would have a chance to cool down or something to drink and make sure to set it in a place where it's least going it's least likely to be disturbed by any of the humans in the house or pets 
in my case I might be putting it at the very edge of my property shaded where I have my call this I have my my big planter so I'll be doing that right after this video oh and the final reason why I am not chopping off the flower stalks yet is because I am currently working on updating my archive of Echeveria flowers I used to maintain uh, an archive on my on my local disk on my computer but I think I think it's about time that I put it online. I used to have an album in Flickr but it wasn't really organized. So I think it would be better if I just place it in my website on seriescapades.com and I'll keep you posted on the progress of that archive. Right now I'm just working on building my database but in the future I'll be using that database once it's there to show you how to identify Echeverias based on flowers so do check it out from time to time and look forward to that video teaching teaching about identification using flowers in the next episode I'll be addressing a question posted by patreon sponsor Oscarino asking about keeping succulents out during winter and I think that would be a great topic for the next episode because we were talking a bit about it earlier you know when I talk about autumn and how I transition into winter so I guess this would be a good point to drive across, especially since a lot of you viewers from the Northern Hemisphere are currently in winter. Well, this might be a bit late, but still, you know, information sharing is good. So make sure to watch out for that episode. I'll see you then. Bye. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters such as Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Pui, Lorena Noti, Camila Baez, Linda Leal, Gwen Ott, Jesse May, Q2, and everyone else who pledge on Patreon. Thank you so much. And finally, you can check out my Instagram. That's at Seriescapades. And I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag Daily Echeveria.